Grace, peace, and mercy be unto you from the triune God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. In this end of chapter 13 in Matthew, we come to the end of Jesus telling many t parables. Almost all of 13 is full of parables. And we see here Jesus talking about the kingdom of heaven. In today's gospel message, we have the last four parables. You may think there's only three, but there's actually four. All four of these he directs directly to his disciples. He's not speaking to the crowds. He's speaking to them alone. Jesus is trying to convey what it means for the kingdom of heaven, what it means to be a Christian. If you go back to the Old Testament reading that we had from Deuteronomy, it's where God calls and tells the Israelites, you are my chosen people. He goes to great detail to tell them it's not what you've done, it's not who you are, it's not about your numbers, it's because I love you. I have chosen you. The epistle talks as well in the middle of the epistle. It says, if God is for us, who can be against us? And then it says, but he gave up his own son for us all, and how will he not also graciously give us all things? And so as we look at these last four parables, Jesus is trying to kind of wind things up for the disciples so they understand. And what Stephanie said is true. However, as we know with Scripture, there's usually more than one way to look at these things. And another way to look at the first two parables, the one of the hidden treasure in the field and the pearls, is that in the case of those two, you and I are the treasure. In the first one, the field is the world, the man is Jesus, and we, the hearer, are the treasure. As we see both throughout the entire scriptures, Old and New Testament, we're constantly referred to as people that God loved. We are treasured above all things in this world and to him, at least believers are. And he, he loves us, his creation, so much he wants all to believe. He makes the statement he would rather they all believe than die separated from him in sin. It's not a wash, it's not a gimme, it's not a get out of hell free card. We still have to repent, we still have to be sorry, we still have to believe. But for those who believe, there is hope. And because we believe, we are considered treasure. God didn't pay for our sins with a master card. He didn't dish out gold, silver, platinum, anything else you can think of that's worth money. He gave his only son, Jesus Christ. He gave him his body and his blood so that we can be redeemed. So Jesus gave everything for that hidden treasure in you. And it's ironic in a way because in reality we're not treasure to behold with the physical eye. We're dirty, we're ugly, and I'm talking about your physical attributes. That has nothing to do with it. It's the sin. We're all separated from God by sin. We're filthy in sin. And yet Jesus sees us as a treasure when we stop refusing the gift that he has paid for and are accepting of that gift. We allow it to be placed into us. We become treasure. And he gave everything so that you, the treasure, can be kept for all of eternity. That's how we need to see ourselves, and that's how we need to see the people around us. So when people talk about being accepting and being loving and uh, taking in people in the world, Christianity has the answer. Jesus teaches us it's not about a man's color, it's not about his sex, his gender, it's not about where he comes from, it's not about what he has or doesn't have. It's all about the relationship in the heart. And here's the key. You and I can't read hearts. So if somebody from Iraq blows up a crowd of people, it doesn't mean all Iraqis are bad people. If you were cheated in a business deal by a Hispanic, it doesn't mean all Hispanics are cheaters. 
if you were done badly by an Asian, it doesn't mean all Asians are bad people. We are called to understand that the kingdom is here and it is now. We are in the throes of what's going on in the battles around us. And we are here to proclaim the gospel message to every single individual that will hear. And everyone hears and who believes becomes a treasure. Every single life at every stage of life is valuable to the one who created that life. And why? Maybe you've heard me say this. Because Jesus has given it value. Jesus came into the world as one of us. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and Mary. So he was a uh, fetus. He was a zygote. Whatever all those specific terms are for the unborn child. Jesus was at every stage of that pr process. And so each stage in that process has value. Every life. Jesus came into the world. He was a, a baby boy. So babies are valuable. He grew into a young man. Young men are valuable. He grew into an adult. Adults are valuable. He went all the way into the end to death. He didn't die of natural causes. At least not in the sense we understand it. And so even in death, his body has value. And so every other body has value. And you think, why is Pastor harping on this? Well, if you've been watching the news, an 11-month-old baby in London or England was allowed to die because in the medical profession's eyes, there was no hope. The court refused to allow that family to bring that child to this country for an experimental or a trial treatment that may have helped the child. We don't know if it would have or not. So how much longer will it be before the courts and the doctors decide who's viable and who's not? Not based on age, not based on anything else, but in their own eyes and their own minds of what they see as viable. I don't know the little boy's name, I believe it was a little boy, that died, and he did die. But to Jesus, if that child was a believer, was a treasure. And that child deserved every opportunity, if it had not heard the gospel, to hear the gospel. And no matter what the circumstances, if we allow someone to die at any stage in life without the opportunity to hear the gospel, we have stepped in between God and his plan for possibly another treasure. And that's why unborn children are important. That's why people who are at any age of life, suffering from terminal illness or other issues are valuable. Jesus tells his disciples that life is valuable. And those that believe are the most valuable. And we want to treasure them. We want to help them. We want to support them. The eighth commandment. We want to do good to our neighbor, not harm to our neighbor. Jesus tells these two parables right after he tells the parable of the, uh, the uh, not the sower, but the one where the tares are planted within the wheat. And he waits till they're harvested to sort them out. And then this, these two are followed by the one where the net is drugged through the water. This huge net's just drugged through the water. Everything that's in the net gets brought up on the land. Good fish are kept, bad fish are thrown out to die. Another indication and in telling of us of what judgment day in hell will be like. The fourth parable is the one where it talks about the uh, scribe being trained and bringing out the old and the new. He's talking about disciples, men and women who have been trained to proclaim the gospel message. And who are they? They are us. It talks about the old and the new. Some people look at that and scratch their heads. Why would you bring out old stuff for guests? Well, it should be no surprise to you that Bible is divided into two parts, Old Testament and New Testament. You don't separate the two. The story of Jesus, the story of God, is one story starting in the very first chapter, first word of Genesis, and ends with the very last word in Revelation, and so it is one story. Man has divided it into two parts, but it's one story. 
Jesus is instructing his disciples. He's instructing you and I that people are valuable and they need to hear his word and they need to have the opportunity to hear the gospel message. And we don't get to pick and choose. If you have to, put it in the context that you as someone who has no hope as before becoming a child of God, you as someone who is steeped in sin, has no hope except for to die and go to hell. And Jesus did everything he did for you. Everything, including suffering, dying on the cross, and raising again. Why? Because he sees you as a treasure. And as it says in the Old Testament, as he tells the Israelites, it has nothing to do with what you have. It has nothing to do with who you are, any uh, titles that you've acclaimed to or any position you've acclaimed to or anything else. It's simply because he loves you. He loves you. God, through the eyes of his son Jesus Christ, sees each and every believer as a treasure. He looks past the outside he looks past the sin, looks into the heart, and sees a heart that is struggling with the good and the bad and the evil and wants to do what's right and needs his help to do what's right in all earnestness believes and wants to believe and wants to do what's right. And he finds treasure. It's easy to get caught up in the world. It's easy to think that people don't matter. Should people who have committed crimes face justice? Yes. But God tells us that no matter what crime they've committed, it's forgivable. And they may need to hear the gospel message. So again, it matters not what stage of life. And you can mark my words. We've talked about this in the pastoral circles. We've seen a huge change in the value of life in the last 10 years. And it's already changed even more drastically in the last 11 months. And it will change even more drastically in the probably half a year to year to come. Life is valuable. It's not about anything other than the fact that God created that life. Jesus gives value to that life. And he wants that life to spend eternity with him in heaven. Jesus cares. Jesus wants you to care. So just as you understand is that you are a treasure before the God that created you, understand that everyone you meet, interact with, can or is a treasure and should be treated as such. So my prayer and the church's prayer for you is take a hard look in the mirror and understand that God didn't have to save you. He didn't have to send his son Jesus Christ into the world. He could have written it all off and still been God. And yet he cares enough to give everything in his son's life, body and blood, so that you and I and all believers can be treasures. That should give you hope, it should give you comfort, and it should give you reassurance that you do not walk alone in this world. As it says, Jesus is for us, no one can be against us. It doesn't mean an easy life, but it means eternal life when you're done in this world. May you walk with the Holy Spirit each and every day. May you seek out the treasures around you and those that are potential treasures. And may you take the task that God has laid before you by the horns and may you ride that ride until he calls you home. And as the Apostle Paul says, to receive the gift or prize that you are so earnestly seeking, which is eternal life in heaven with all believers, all treasures for eternity. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, guard your hearts and your minds through your faith in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ.